Um, so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you four cases. Each of the four cases could be some of them are basic tests and some of them are complicated tests and then we'll have a short discussion of each of it. So now I'll be scrolling and I'll put an arrow wherever I find the pathology for you to understand better. So this is obviously a sagittal T2FS image and this is the lateral meniscus because this is the lateral compartment. The lateral meniscus is somewhat okay, there is some grade 1 signal. Now let's look at the medial meniscus. So while I'm scrolling, you can see there is a hyperintense signal, okay, which is kind of extending up to the inferior surface. Now remember, better than T2, your PD images are really helpful to look at these tears. And so here you can see that there is a signal, horizontal signal, which is extending up to the inferior surface over here. So this is nothing but a horizontal tear. The horizontal signal is always a horizontal tear, right? So this is a horizontal tear. As I go posteriorly, what do I see? That there is a paramenisical cyst formation as well. A large multilobulated, or rather I should say multiloculated paramenisical cyst is there in the midline, but it is arising somewhere from this region. Because there is a complete rent, the fluid is going out from this rent and forming a cyst. Now as I come to the periphery, what can you observe? So look over here, the triangular bit of the meniscus is maintained. But when I come to the periphery, the inferior part is missing, right? Only you can see the superior part, the inferior part is missing. Now let's look on the coronal images again. So here, I'm, this is again the posterior horn because I'm looking very posteriorly. And as I come in the front, you'll observe that the inferior part of the posterior horn is missing. And as I come further more anteriorly, this is the body. But what do you see? There is a meniscal flap that is going under the body in the inferior medial gutter. This is called as the thumbs down sign, right? So the body is the entire hand and the thumb is going downwards. Similarly, you can have a thumbs up sign but the meniscus flap displaces in the superior medial gutter over here. So this is the meniscal flap. Now what has happened? Basically, I'll just put a sag along with this. So this part of the meniscus which is missing from here, it got displaced inside in the uh, medial gutter. So this is technically a complicated horizontal tear where a flap has got displaced into the gutter, right? So it's a horizontal tear with a displaced meniscal flap. Now I'll go back to the PowerPoint again. Okay. So um, here, so now what is a flap tear? It's a displaced horizontal tear. The common locations for the meniscal flaps is superior and inferior gutter and as well as adjoining the posterior root. This is one very common location. We'll see a case of it later. So it displaces in the anterior intercondylar notch. Another example, you can see that there is a horizontal tear. We can see the inferior part of the meniscus is missing. And when you come anteriorly, this is now a thumbs up sign where the flap is displaced in the superior medial gutter, right? Now let's go back to the next case. So, um, Again, I will show you the FS image first. Okay, let's keep like this. So what I'm going to do is, again, there is a medial meniscus pathology. So I'm going to come from periphery to midline. Okay, so now as I'm going, what do you see? There is a horizontal signal going to the inferior surface. The inferior part of the posterior horn is not visible properly, right? Again, you can appreciate the tear, but added to that, look at the anterior horn. Even the anterior horn is blunted. The triangle of the anterior horn is blunted. As I go further towards the midline, you can see there is some meniscal tissue that is going. However, here, what do you appreciate? This is the double PCL sign, right? So this is your PCL and this is the meniscal flap just anterior to the PCL. And further on in the midline, you can see that the meniscal flap is there in the intercondylar notch. Right? So what has happened now, we we'll look on the coronal which will give us a better idea. So here, all I'm just going to begin from the anterior most aspect. So this is the anterior horn or the anterior root of medial meniscus. Now you can see there are two structures going. One structure is going in the intercondylar notch which is nothing but the bucket handle tear and the flap is displaced in the intercondylar notch. Right? And it goes and attaches to the posterior root over here. So how will you report this? That there is a bucket handle tear of the body and posterior horn extending into anterior horn with the meniscal flap displaced in the intercondylar notch. That is an incomplete report. What is missing? Now you can see there is an additional horizontal tear that is seen both in the body as well as in the posterior horn. 
right so we've already seen this tear over here in the posterior horn so you have to mention that there is a additional horizontal tear in the peripheral body and posterior horn remnant which means the part of the meniscus which is still in normal position it also has an additional tear inside it right so then that finishes your complete description now um, whenever there is a meniscal fragment in the notch you need to mention if it is a lot of degenerated or con con uh, if there is a lot of contusion why if it's a good quality they will bring it back and repair it if it's a very bad and a macerated quality then they might just do a meniscectomy and remove the flap from the notch so that the locking of the locking of the knee goes away okay so um with this again i'll switch back to this thing so now we've seen the next case so bucket handle tear i had already told you is a large complicated longitudinal tear so what exactly is a longitudinal tear longitudinal tear runs along the long axis of the meniscus it's commonly peripheral more commonly peripheral it is common to see these tears with acl tears one thing i need you to keep in your mind for especially those who are beginners with msk reporting whenever you report a meniscus tear make sure that you look at the meniscus in a triangular fashion that will help you to identify the pattern most easily so if you want to look at the body look on the coronal images if you want to look at the anterior and posterior horn look on the sagittal images but always make it a point to identify the tear pattern when you are looking at the meniscus in a triangular fashion right so in bucket handle tear there is a large longitudinal tear it just flips inside and like a handle of a bucket it gets stuck in the notch why because this place is very small it is very difficult for it to now come back again to its original position so this is a bucket handle tear with a double pcl sign always remember to differentiate this from an oblique menisco meniscal ligament which is a normal variant or a normal structure sometimes very obviously visible otherwise you will land up reporting a bucket handle tear and patient will go undergo a surgery for nothing okay so make sure not to mistake the two so oblique menisco meniscal ligament is an oblique ligament that runs from the anterior horn of medial meniscus to the posterior horn of lateral meniscus so here this is the anterior root of the medial meniscus now you can see there are two structures arising from it first let's concentrate on the pink arrow structure so you can see this is going and attaching to the posterior root of the other meniscus so that is nothing but a oblique menisco meniscal ligament now i'll come back and again look at the yellow structure now this yellow structure is going and attaching to the posterior root of the same meniscus so this is a bucket handle tear this is a bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus whereas this is a oblique menisco meniscal ligament make sure you are not mistaking a oblique menisco meniscal ligament for a bucket handle tear in any patient all right okay um furthermore there are two more longitudinal tears which have got wonderful names and they are pretty common with cruciate ligament injuries the one of which is a ramp lesion ramp lesion is more commonly a menisco capsular junction tear or it can be a posterior horn of the medial meniscus tear a peripheral posterior horn medial meniscus tear but more commonly it is a junction tear so when you see a discrete fluid signal between the capsule and the meniscus that is what it is a ramp lesion now um, again ramp lesions you can also appreciate very well on the actual images so you can see that this black line is the capsule this black line is actually the meniscus and between that you can see a hyperintern signal going through which is nothing but the ramp lesion or the menisco capsular junction tear another name is the risberg rip tear which involves the lateral meniscus so this is the normal pcl behind this you can see this black dot that is the ligament of risberg now as we come towards the periphery you can appreciate this is the ligament of risberg this should attach to the posterior horn of lateral meniscus in the inner one third part i'll show it to you on the actual images but here what's happening even though i'm reaching almost up to the posterior horn body junction i can still see that there is a longitudinal tear that is extending which is along the attachment of ligament of risberg okay all of you can appreciate the ligament is coming coming and now there is a tear along the attachment of the ligament of risberg and this is nothing but a risberg rip tear basically it's a longitudinal tear the ligament just comes and attaches like this and the tear starts happening at that level so it just begins to tear apart right so um as i told you 
normally the ligament of risberg should attach in the inner one third of the so somewhere over here is where normally it should attach beyond that you should not be able to see this hyper intense signal the fact that i'm able to see the hyper intense signal beyond inner one third of the posterior horn it means that there is a risberg rib tear now remember this ramp lesions and risberg rib tear do not over report them they are only visible if it's a cruciate ligament injury if it's not a cruciate ligament injury please don't bother about them all right the third type radial tears now radial tears can be complete or it can be incomplete tears a complete tear means full thickness right so basically these are the circumferential fibers which run along the length of the meniscus and they are responsible for hoop strength now what exactly is hoop strength it prevents the meniscus from extruding out of the joint right so radial tears cut the circumferential fibers there is loss of hoop strength which results in extrusion of the meniscus so, um against that incomplete radial tears they affect the apical free margin but they do not reach up to the periphery and they will be seen as a blunted meniscus so here look at the actual image there is completely no meniscus over here it's a complete radial tear of the posterior root uh, here also you can appreciate and what has happened there is extrusion so you can see if and if i draw this line you can see there is a extrusion of the meniscus now extrusion is calculated from the level of the peripheral tibial cortex medial tibial cortex up to the peripheral margin of the meniscus if it's 3 or more than 3 it's extrusion we don't go by the scale we look it's more on eyeballing for, but for beginners or when you are in doubt you can always do a measurement okay now um so now what happens if you're looking so this is your axial and your coronal image on the sagittal image how will a radial tear look like so here you can see this is a normal looking posterior horn and then what you see it's the the meniscus is just absent so this is this is called as the ghost meniscus sign what has happened is this is your normal meniscus this is a complete radial tear now at this particular this particular section is actually going through the level of the tear and because it's going through the level of the tear you do not see a meniscus over there because there is some fluid filled gap in that region right so this is called as the ghost meniscus sign further on if you go further medially you can see the normal posterior root attachment again so this was a complete radial tear of the posterior horn adjacent to the posterior root and with resultant extrusion of the meniscus so in any radial tear you have to mention if there is an extrusion or not meaning if there is no extrusion you have to mention that there is no meniscal extrusion why because presence of meniscal extrusion prevents the orthopod will no longer think of repairing the meniscus the repair part is done done and dusted you cannot repair after that so that's why the surgeon needs to know if there is an extrusion or not if there is a radial tear all right um a partial radial tear or an incomplete radial tear what you see is a cleft sign okay so you can see just a fluid fill signal better seen on axial images if you have a section going through the meniscus so you can see this is the normal meniscus this is the normal apical free margin of the meniscus but here you can see that there is a defect so there is a small tear in the apical free margin whenever your section been cut at this level you will see a fluid filled gap which is called as the cleft sign so cleft sign is seen when you look at the part of the meniscus in a rectangular fashion okay meaning body will be in a rectangular fashion on the sagittal images anterior and posterior horn will be in a rectangular fashion on the coronal images exactly opposite to a triangular appearance so either you can see it in a triangular fashion or you can see it in a rectangular fashion now when you see it in a triangular fashion what you will you see that there is a blunting of the apical free margin it will have a truncated appearance but if you see it on the a rectangular box like fashion you will see a cleft sign theek okay? hai so which is more easier to pick up obviously a triangular for anything and everything just look at the meniscus when it's in a triangular form simple all right now let's look at case 3 so here i'm going to go from midline to an outside theek okay, hai i'll just scroll on this so i'm beginning from the posterior root all right and then i'm going to come out 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 you can see there is some waviness in the apical free margin and now just have a close look at this waviness i hope it's zoomed enough for you to understand right so now as i as you can see what is happening that white line is kind of traveling back and forth right so it's traveling from the tip apical free margin up to the periphery of the meniscus this is called as the marching cleft sign 
you're not seeing the cleft in one position it's going back and forth from the apical free margin up to the posterior horn what exactly is this tear this is a complicated radial tear which i already told you was a parrot beak tear now when i look at the axial section if you have a good section at this level what will you see over here you can see there is a this is the tear and it's going like this so parrot beak tear they begin as a radial tear but later on they feel ki bas bahut ho gaya ab mujhe kahin aur jana hai so they start walking as a longitudinal tear so they begin as a radial tear and then they walk ahead as a longitudinal tear so this part is the radial component and this part is the longitudinal component you can see it's forming a beak of a parrot that's why it's called as a parrot beak tear how do you identify it if you don't have the axial image look in the triangular fashion you will see a marching cleft sign the signal will move from the apical free margin up to the periphery of the meniscus okay so parrot beak tear so this is how the tear goes okay a uh, marching cleft sign so now let's uh, okay i think i should have come back let's just look at the last case as well and then we'll finish the meniscus session so here now i this is a lateral meniscus involvement i'll come from the periphery inwards so this is the body theek hai the rectangular shape body on the sagittal image well, now what do you see you can see that there is some tear that is coming in the posterior horn the anterior horn looks okay there is some signal but it is not a tear you can see that this is blunted so look at this you can appreciate the triangle tip of the anterior horn but you cannot appreciate the triangular tip of the posterior horn so it's like a truncated meniscus right and as i go further posteriorly it is still blunted okay now this is actually forming the so what is this structure this structure is going here anterior to the posterior cruciate ligament this is ligament of humphrey so just like ligament of risberg ligament of humphrey also comes and attaches to the posterior horn of lateral meniscus just that it is not well visible in all the patients but it is clearly visible in this patient right so this is the me uh, truncated meniscus and now you can see some extra structure popping in right this one so let's look at the pd image also so here i'm going you can see there is this is the pcl but there is some extra structure within the joint right this is a meniscal flap so if you see on the axial you can see the blunted meniscus so the normal meniscal margin is there till here then you can see the meniscal apical free margin is missing here and when i go up in the notch i can see this extra structure which is going and attaching to the root of the posterior root of the lateral meniscus so this is nothing but a meniscal flap okay so what has happened is this uh, truncated part this particular meniscal tissue got displaced in the posterior intercondylar notch it remained attached to the posterior root and it just got flipped in the intercondylar notch what happened this is the meniscus this is how the tear developed so it was a parrot beak kind of a tear it developed as a incomplete radial tear and then it went longitudinally now what happens this meniscus becomes unstable and it just flipped over so it just got flipped over like this in the posterior intercondylar notch okay